All right, so let's bring in Nizar Fassad. He joins us from Boston. He is a former advisor with the Palestinian Negotiations Affairs, and he is now with the project on Middle East democracy. And also joining us on set is Shahar Azani of the pro-Israeli advocacy group Stand With Us. He is also the former deputy spokesman with Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you both for joining us tonight. So do you think a lot of Palestinians and Israelis appreciate the U.S. involvement here? Uh, they, man, I don't think they're going to appreciate it much. I think they have bigger problems and they're very skeptical about uh, the role of the American envoy. But as far as the Palestinian public, I'm skeptical that they're interested in his visit. Forward is very low given the, the experience. So, Shahar, do you agree with that? Do you think expectations are low for what the uh, Secretary can actually accomplish this week? I think at this point we need to do everything we can to de-escalate the situation. And if Secretary Kerry's uh, visit will assist in this uh, important goal, then it's absolutely more than welcome. We also know that the United States is the only actor in the field of the Middle East and the Israeli-Palestinian negotiations. And therefore, we hope that Secretary Kerry will be able to convince Abbas to stop with the incitement and with the hateful speeches and bring down the, the flames. Do you feel like that's part of the problem, though, the fact that the United States is one of the only actors in this process here, that maybe more power should get involved? In this context, if the United States wishes to get involved in, uh, in a more practical way in bringing down the flames and the education and incitement on the Palestinian side, then we, by all means, the Israeli public would welcome the European Union, the United Nations, or anyone else who will be willing to come and finally monitor and assist in bringing down those levels of incitement that we hear even today from Palestinian leadership. And I do hope that this visit by Kerry will not be a repetition of past visits and old formulas that did not work, but engage in a new way on an issue that is extremely important that has been completely swept under the rug, which is what's happening on the public social media, the official media, the papers of the Palestinian Authority, where the hatred of Jews is the uh, slogan of the day. I want to tell you one thing, Jonathan, if I may. Today started with Israelis rescuing Syrian and Iraqi refugees on Mediterranean Sea after their boat sank when they tried to flee ISIS threats. It ended with ISIS-style radicalized ideology present at the central bus station of Beersheba, killing innocent Israelis. This has to stop. This has to stop. Yeah, the violence without question has to stop. And Nazar, do you agree with that assessment there of what is, what is sparking this outrage among so many Palestinians? If, even if it's true that there's a problem of incitement or, uh, or curricula, these curricula were always there, and, this, uh, and the rhetoric was always there, what changed is but the is, Israeli is provocations on the Haram. Nizar, is there a problem with incitement among Palestinian leaders? No, I don't think so, because if it's there all the time... What's the yeah, that is a major concern, Shahar, as you know, is that, that is Israel bears some responsibility for this, the, the Palestinians allege, and a lot of that is because of the crackdown the conditions of many Palestinians who live in the West Bank and Gaza. A Palestinian who carries a knife and attacks a 72-year-old is not thinking neither about negotiations nor about the final status uh, border between Israel and Palestine. The ideology, and this, Jonathan, is the ideology. When you hear this every Friday at the mosque or at the school, this is what brings about the killing and butchering. The truth is that, as Prime Minister Netanyahu stated, the status quo on Temple Mount has not changed. And we use a big word here, status quo. But let this, me just tell you. This is more about the mosque and more about Temple Mount, isn't it? Not? This is more about, about the conditions that Palestinians face and what it's like living day to day. The Violence that we're seeing now has nothing to do with the daily negotiations or Israel and the Palestinian peace process. It's got everything to do with being educated to hate Jews. Let me just say one thing. The status quo that we're talking about and keep on mentioning means that Jews cannot pray on their holiest site. And this decision was made by Israel in 67 in order to take out the religious component of this national disagreement with the Palestinians. And even though we strive to maintain the status quo that prevents Jews from praying in their holiest of sites, we still see this kind of violence where Palestinians use the same holy sites to hoard stones and launch them against Israelis and Israeli police. This is disrespectful by Muslims towards their holy sites when they burn Joseph's tomb. So let, let's get Nazar to, to respond to this, because he's throwing out a lot there. This is, in my opinion, uh, a manifestation of frustration by uh, average citizens who are under occupation for so long. and Top, top leaders. But, Shahar, on your final thoughts here, I want to, I want to talk with you about the concern uh, between the U.S., the United States, and uh, Israel, obviously with Secretary Kerry's visit uh, coming up this week. Do you worry about the strains, uh, about the relations between the two countries being strained further 
especially as we see more and more violence here. Um, Israel and the US, mm -hmm. absolutely not. And I just want to relate to something that Pizar said, which amazed me, the continuous assumption that we've always seen this education of incitement and it's fine and taking it for granted, the same tiger that Palestinian leadership is riding at the moment, the tiger of violence and terror, may end up turning them on their back and devouring the same leadership. Hamas in Gaza is trying to instigate widespread violence for chaos in the West Bank in order to take over Palestinian authority. I think it would be very wise for Palestinian leadership to remove the blinds from their eyes and start taking care of this important and crucial issue of incitement and not treat it so as if it's always been there. Explain to me what you want to hear from Mahmoud Abbas that you have not heard yet. I want Mahmoud Abbas to take his car or a chopper and get to Jerusalem or Prime Minister Netanyahu to get to Ramallah and sit together and resume negotiations. Prime Minister Netanyahu said a dozen times over every possible stage, let us resume negotiations. I wish that Abbas would take back to the negotiating table for the sake of Israelis and first for the sake of Palestinians. So maybe now with Secretary Kerry coming to the region, I'm maybe that. they'll open that door possibly to restarting those peace talks. Okay, we'll leave it there. Shahar Azani, thank you so much for your time, as well as um, Nizar Farsak uh, in Boston. Thank you for your time as well. We appreciate it to both of you men. Thank you, Rebecca.